Jimmy Garoppolo is hurt again, Sibla. And it's the same, it's just like the same pattern. Plays poorly, doesn't say anything. Next day, actually, he got hurt in the first half. And it's a big reason why he didn't play well. And we don't know if he's gonna play this week. Like, ask straight up, he was like, eh, well, we'll see. And then yesterday they had a practice. It was a walkthrough because it's Tuesday, it's only a couple days removed from the from the game. He didn't he was not a full participant in a walkthrough. I couldn't see if he ever threw a pass. I will find out today if he can throw a pass. But uh, I guess I'm not asking you to like predict whether he's going to play or not because that's impossible. But just of what course. do you think of like this whole drama? Well, this is exactly has been the concern for Jimmy. It's why we drafted Trey Lance. And as we sit here in the postseason, not having played Trey Lance, putting all our eggs in the Jimmy Garoppolo baskets. And now he's hurt. It's so it's it's painful. Places. Yeah, yeah, it's just a painful reminder of exactly what the concern with Jimmy Garoppolo is. And, but here we are. There's nothing that can be done at this point. He has to play. I mean, it's such a Why? big order. To Why does he have start. to play? Can you explain that? Yeah, um, because of the lack of development of Trey Lance. Uh, it would be one thing to ask Trey Lance to play the Texans, to play the Cardinals early in the season. But here we're going to Lambeau Field to play Aaron Rodgers, who is, for all intents and purposes, he is in his prime. And a really good Packers team that is really looking for a little bit of revenge against the 49ers. You know, we've dominated them in, in the recent memory, you know, the last 10 years in the postseason. So it's not so, fair to, to Trey. But isn't it fair? Let me, let, me, let me just argue with you for a second for the sake of sure. arguing. Um, devil's advocate here. Isn't it not fair to Jimmy? He's hurt. Literally hurt. Injured in two places. It's a, yeah, it's, 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 it's definitely a good point. And I, yeah. I'll be honest with you. It's why he wasn't at walkthrough practice because he, it's a sprain. Yeah. And mobility and it creates inflammation. They have to keep yeah. it loose. But to be honest with you, the best thing for Jimmy Garoppolo would be to do nothing all week. And that's mm. not a good way to prepare no, for a divisional not. game. And that's the thing with Jimmy. I have this stat that's like vicious. when he's not fully prepared for a game, he's done it four times, played without being a full participant in every practice leading up to the game. It was the Miami game last year. He threw two picks and, and, and got uh, injured in the first half left. It was the Indianapolis game this year. He threw two picks and lost. It was the Rams game this year. He threw two picks and one, and it was last week where he threw one pick. So he's he's done this four, four times and thrown seven picks in those games. To me, I'm not even concerned about the injuries as much as the lack of preparation. Like if he exactly. starts without practicing this week, you can almost bank on at least one pick in Green Bay. And that's the issue. If he, he will be less healthy. If he does not mm. practice, he's going up against Aaron Rodgers. So it's kind of like yeah. Yeah. poison at this. It's just a bad place to be in. But, you know, that's why I always say it's not always the best team that goes to the Super Bowl and wins. It's the healthiest team. And that's really where the 49ers are. They are reeling from injuries right now. This is not a good look for this week. They were so healthy just a week ago. But now the quarterback, the defensive end, the middle linebacker, it's a different – I mean, it's week to week, right? So, look – I. I understand that you said they got to start Jimmy. And if, if if they were to start Trey this weekend, I think I would feel like, man, this is really unfair to Trey. You know, like now you need him to start in Lambeau on, uh, in the playoffs and save your season when you could have been preparing him for, for this moment. But at the same time, I mean, I think Jimmy's looking at it like, well, I don't know how Jimmy's looking at it. But you could say two injuries. I mean, he's not even that great when he's healthy. And my issue with Jim, again, my issue with Jimmy is the reason he's playing exactly. the experience. Because he's supposed to make smarter decisions. You can't trust Trey Lance's football like you at this time. But and I, we're going to talk about the quarterback sneak later. It might have been too cute of a call. Um, still, nothing excuses Jimmy Garoppolo not being, being able to execute a, a shift. And I know he can execute shifts because he does it all the time. To me, that's a man choking under pressure. It's, the, it's, the play, it's like the last play of the well, game. Here's what that about, because one of the things you look for when you're under center on a shift, right? And you see every quarterback... They, they sit there and yes. they watch the shift. Yes! He never looked at the shift. This was I mean, Jimmy the whole he time. He signaled the shift, right? Like, he signaled, he's like, okay, Trent, you go. And then you're supposed to freaking watch him, see him get set, count to one, then call for the snap. I mean, look, I didn't play And the thing is that Trent really Williams was a millisecond away from being set. It was so bang, bang. It was like, did they really just call that? So, and so then I was like, I guess they have trust, to, but it was so close. You can't trust Jimmy's brain. Under pressure. Exactly. And that, that was such a horrible feeling for Trent Williams. You could just yeah. see the guy's the greatest tackle who's ever yeah. played the game. And he yeah. doesn't make mental errors like this. No, no. So you, got, no. You, I mean, 
you need that kind of brain in your quarterback as well. And, and you know, again, it's not that Jimmy cannot execute it. You said it yourself. Of course he can. But it's in the moment. Jimmy tunnel visions. It's why he yeah, missed IU deep on third down. It's why he threw these boneheaded picks because he tunnel visions. And what did Kyle say after the game? He said Jimmy got a little excited. Well, that's – and that's what Jimmy uh, uh, got upset about. He was like, J Kyle said that. Because what it means is he – crumbled in the moment the moment was too big for him is what is what right happened. and that's how i it's feel one about those things i think the it's moment's one of those too big things for where him. yeah and it's one of those things where when i saw the shift called i was like what are we doing I, I i was thinking why why are we calling a shift there's no way they can stop jimmy garoppolo in less than a yard they probably couldn't even stop him with a two-yard sneak and it's i'm well, just no, thinking it's one thing to be like, like it wouldn't be crazy for Kyle to be like, look, I want to call it with a shift for X, Y, Z reasons, but I'm not going to do it because I don't trust Jimmy Garoppolo to execute a shift in the right. fourth quarter. That's crazy. Right. It's like putting a marksman right. on the hair who misses half his shots and then you're surprised in a mission yeah. and then, you know, when he finally misses a shot. And no, a good leader knows what he has and he doesn't put his guys in the position where they have to use their lack of skill set. That's really what it was. That's where I am kind of like – I want, to I want to put the blame on, on Jimmy as far as, like, he should not have done that. It's dumb. It's just, just sit there and watch it's, Trent Williams. It's dumb. But it's dumb. As, it's dumb. As far as Kyle Shanahan, my question for you is, are We're you surprised? Yeah. Why are you surprised? That's fair. Uh, that, but all I, all, all I want to say, and I know Trent – well, I don't know who's going to start this game, Sibla. I'm going to put it that way. I don't think Jimmy's going to start practice very much this week. I think Trey Lance is going to be he practicing can't. this week. And if Trey Lance looks good and Jimmy's hurt, I don't know what's going to happen. And all I want to well, say, Trey is, Lance is the simulated Aaron Rodgers, so I guess he's no, just I'm telling you, he's not. There. He's not doing scout team this week because Jimmy's not practicing. Trey Lance is doing first team, and scout team must be Nate Sudfeld. You see, that's you see what I'm saying. Trey Lance is getting the rep this week. If he looks good and Jimmy's hurt, so here's the question for you: If Trey Lance looks like he's executing, would you go with him? Yes, yes, and I would have went with him the last two weeks for a few reasons. One, Jimmy is hurt. He's hurt. He's got two injuries now. He's not even particularly great when he's healthy. And again, he's not up to the moment. He's He's yes. been clutch in regular season games, but he crumbled against uh, the Vikings. They, had to, they, they, they wouldn't even let him participate against the Packers two years ago. He crumbled against the Chiefs. He crumbled against the, the Cowboys. His career uh, quarterback rating in the playoffs is 73. He can't execute a simple quarterback sneak or a shift with the game on the line. I don't trust him. I don't see, like, his experience, his age, none of it seems to manifest itself on the field. And I think I actually would trust 21-year-old Trey Lance's composure and football IQ over Jimmy's. I would. But that's just me. I, I think one of the things that Trey Lance has working for him is, as they say, ignorance is a bliss. And I just don't think the moment would actually be too big for him. To be honest with you, a lot of people would say Trey Lance will have too much pressure to go into Lambo pressure at all. Because there's no expectation for him to actually win. He has every excuse on the table. And I just feel like the kind of mindset that Trey Lance has, he would go into that game pretty humble. He might lay an egg, but I, I don't think he would. I honestly don't. It's oh, just one of those things. These are huge roulette-style decisions for Kyle Shanahan to make. When he started against the Texans a few weeks ago, that was a playoff game. Had the Niners lost, everything would have been over. So people forget. Of course. There was a lot of pressure on Trey Lance. That wasn't a good team. That has more pressure in some regards because now yeah. you're, in, you're in the tournaments. That's all yeah. he had to do. And he got that for the team. And, and it's one of those things where everybody worked so hard all season, and then they turn to Trey Lance and be like, we need you to push this one in for us. 53-man roster, now it's on you. If he lost in that game, I mean, people would have looked at him as like, man, he's a bust. Kyle's an idiot. This, first of all, they wouldn't have made the playoffs. And next year would have looked really bleak. But no, he played really well. He kept the Niners. They, they blew out Houston after being down at halftime. He was not uh, phased at all. Blew him out. And then Jimmy comes back, and they have been in. They had an overtime game against the Rams. They had a game against the, the Cowboys that felt like an overtime game. Oh, boom, is she gone? She'll be back. We only got to do one topic today. Oh, she's gone. She's back. Yo. Yes, anyway. we're here. Had a little glitch. I lost you for a second. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, I think we've done enough. I, I would say I would, I, I would start Trey Lance. But, again, if they did start him, I would be nervous. I'd be like, man, this is a lot to ask for the kid. But I also feel like it's a lot to ask of Jimmy. It's a lot to ask of Jimmy. It is a lot to ask of Jimmy. To be honest with you, the only thing, regardless of who starts, if Trey Lance was to start – um, one of the ways we dominate the Packers is with physical run game. He would bring more of that to the table. Agree, especially if I mean, I mean, he didn't pass at all. In what was it, eight passes? 
in, yes. in the last time he faced the Packers. Yes. Yes. So Sudfeld could have thrown eight passes. He probably would have completed at least four of them. So And the Niners didn't need any of those passes to win. It was all the run game. So Kyle Shanahan could slow this down. I don't think the Niners are in danger. That's my point. If Trey Lance starts, they'll just take the ball out of his hands and put it in Mitchell's. And I they will have him run as well. It's easier to run 40, 45 times with Trey Lance because I, I don't think you can do it with just Elijah Mitchell and Debo. You need a third ball carrier. And it's not going to, it seems like it's not Jeff Wilson Jr. right now. So it's not, it's not Garoppolo. It could be Lance. And the thing is, in the snow, <coughs> those outside runs that require one hard cut may not be as effective. There may be a lot of slipping on the ice. So you may need guys who just bang it between the tackles. That's Trey Lance. I mean, that's your, that's what he does. And Jeff Wilson might be yeah. good in this game as well. Yeah. All right. Niners Dodgers says, thanks, Grant, for the nonstop 49ers football coverage. Thanks, Sibylla, too. Brady Hill says, let's talk Trey being the best option. Yeah, Brady, let's talk about it. Grew up in MN straight from North, North Dakota State. Old dogs are sore in cold weather. Also, uh, M is the goat. Enough of your the slander. Sorry, I was telling people how I'm not a big Eminem fan yesterday. Um, uh, he has a couple good songs, though, from like 1999. But anyway, what I'm saying is... Without me? <laughs> <coughs> yeah, old dogs sore in the cold. I don't know, man. It just seems to me like... He's been really, really uh, rusty without practice. And I can't see the Niners beating the Packers if he goes and turns the ball over. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I like the comments. I like the comments because uh, Trey Lance should know something about playing in the cold. North Dakota is miserable when it comes to cold weather. I mean, that, that's like Idaho at that point. Now, they so, played yeah. the Dome, but I would imagine they played some outside games around there. Well, some <laughs> practice. And the other thing is, um, where, where did he play high school ball? Do you know? I think he played in Minnesota. I think he Okay, wanted, so he's yeah. ready to go. He's ready I think to go. He is. Yep, absolutely. Now Jimmy uh, Garoppolo knows something about cold weather as well. But again, it's the injury. So yeah. I do I definitely And again, if, if Trey Lance plays in this game, serious the spring oh, is. if Trey Lance plays in this game, it's not gonna be because Kyle Shanahan makes like a, a surprise decision. It's gonna be because Jimmy's not healthy enough to go. And what Jimmy's tell, telling me right now is he doesn't know that he's gonna be healthy enough to go. Like he was asked point. This was interesting. You can go back and listen to the press conference, but a couple of people, Matt Mayoko first went, first of all, Jimmy, like, do you think you might play in this game? And then second of all, here's a second question. And Jimmy just went straight to the second question, didn't answer the first one. And then Chris Biederman did the same thing. Do you think you're going to play? And then what about starting three and five? And what does that show about the resilience? And he just went straight to the second question. Then Tracy Sandler had to say, Jimmy, are you confident that you're going to play this weekend? And he, and he said, well, you know, we'll have to see. So he avoided the question. Then when he was asked point blank, he wouldn't, he said that. So, I mean, I'm sure he wants to – sure, he'll probably want to play. He wants to look like a tough guy. But it's clear right now he wants people to be on the edge of their seat and hoping and wishing that he comes. I, I don't know. I feel like Niner fans should be like, please just take the week off, dude. Please. You're in pain. I, again, Green Bay is not about the passing game. That's not how we're going to win them. It's exactly. going to be the rushing. Here's the exactly. thing. If I give Aaron Rodgers six possessions a game, I guarantee you he scores on three of them. Two touchdowns and at least a field goal. Thank you. But let's give him three touchdowns on six possessions. That's 21 points. Yep. In other words, you have to keep him on the sideline. If you start playing shootout with him, you will lose. Plain you and will. simple. Exactly. And I think that basically the Packers are going to get no less than 24 in this game. Absolutely. 24. That's the you magic can, number. And I, I, I out in the first quarter and at least put seven on the board. Yeah, and they got to limit the possessions, as you said. I don't know what. I want to look it up, but like what percentage of the Packers possessions this year did they score touchdowns on? I bet you it's a really high number. So eight, nine. In, in regards to possession, there are a couple of statistics here where, that do favor the Niners. Their red zone defense is not good. And, and our red defense zone defense. Is, yeah. Right. And our red zone offense is number one. Voice ad agency says you called me out in the cone phone about being optimistic with Jimmy Garoppolo in the playoffs. I am not anymore. Playing with house money at this point, Star Lance. Yeah, man. I mean, to me, a lot of people wanted to praise Jimmy for what he did for like, you know, certain throws he made in Dallas. But to me, the only reason Dallas had a chance to win that game was because of Garoppolo. The only reason. The Niners left 34 points out there. Yeah. They really did. That was and insane. Be, he, he played horribly. There's, the, that's, there's. That's how I saw it. But people were like, oh, they won. Just no be happy. And people were like, oh, but they won. Just be happy. Like, no, like they won a wild card game. They got a lot. They got a lot more to go. This team really should win the Super Bowl. Like, let's let's make sure that. What's holding to the highest standard until they win? Oh, the roster is as long as we get Bosa back. This is a loaded. Super Bowl team. Absolutely loaded. Absolutely loaded. Good morning. Uh, can't wait. Starting Lance. <laughs> See, Good I'm morning. saying everyone on my channel. Everyone on my channel is on the same page with this one. 
We just want a yes. party. Says I've noticed Jittery Jimmy is starting to get a little more comfortable. He's moving up in the pocket a, a little and trying to make off schedule plays. It's true, and he did avoid sacks. That's like the best thing he did against Dallas. And and credit to the O line as well. They they did keep a pretty good pocket. He had a lot of time sometimes. That offensive line has really improved ever since Mike McGlinchey got replaced. I, I mean, I wonder you know what if they're doing. They're gelling. Yeah. They may not be the best names in the NFL with the exception of Trent Williams, but they gel. That's the thing. It's a unit now. And I think that's very indicative of how 49ers offensive line in history plays. They may not have the biggest names out there, but they are good units. And there's not one liability on that offensive line. We thought Tom Compton would be a liability. He's an asset as a run blocker, and they can mitigate his weaknesses as a pass protector. Same with Brunskill. We've there's been saying that all season. On there's one yeah, we've been saying just don't put them in positions where they fail. Use them for what they are. And it seems like the Niners uh, coaching staff has figured out how to use the run blockers and the pass blockers and interchange them on the downs rather than leave them out there. But the issue I really think is McGlinchey. When you have a first round pick out there, you are forced to play him on both downs. And that affects basically like a domino effect, how you can interchange the other tackles out there and guards. When McGlinchey so, was in the field, the Niners had two liabilities on their offense. Now that he's out, they have one liability on their offense, and his name is James. Milfun, no, John says, Grant, thanks for an amazing season. Much love. Go, Trey. Thank you, John. Much love. Kyle, treating Jeff Wilson Jr. like Breed at zero carries. Yeah, it's – I don't like it. I mean, <clears throat> run more. What happened to the 40-run uh, magic number? I like that. We, we should be aiming for that every week as opposed to – I don't know. He's well, they got different. something like 67 yards uh, back in early in the season in the matchup with Green Bay, and they barely lost that game. That's just not the recipe for success. Right. They have to run Jeff Wilson. They have to. Trey Lance was reportedly running scout team as Aaron Rodgers. No, I was there. Okay. Matt Barrows was asking questions like, hey, you know, what are you guys requiring from Trey Lance this week as a scout team quarterback emulating Rodgers? And basically what the Niners were saying was like, uh... Trey Lance isn't running the scout team this week. <laughs> Trey Lance is running the team this week. Jimmy Garoppolo isn't practicing, at least today. That's what well, – they didn't say it, but they were like – like, because the, the press conference was like an hour before practice, and they were basically like, just wait and wait till you see what's about to happen. Like, no, Sudfeld is running the scout team this week. Maybe, maybe Jimmy comes back and is a full participant by th today or Thursday. We'll see. But for now, he's working through things, as Jim Harbaugh would say. Yes. Jimmy is Joe Biden. You know the gaff is coming. It's coming. Sometimes it's hilarious. Sometimes it's just sad. I can see it. I can see it. See what you mean? See what you mean? We're not going to get too political. <laughs> that just pisses everyone off. doesn't matter how well Lance looks in practice. If Jimmy is healthy enough to play, Shanahan will go with him. Great. Great. Well, there's no doubt. If he thinks he's healthy enough to play, he will play him just because it avoids the controversy of if he brings in Lance and Lance does not do a good job, then all of a sudden it's bad coaching. Right. Essentially, why did you play bad the decision? Game? Bad exactly. decision. Yeah. Why'd you throw him to the wolves? You yeah. put him in position to fail. Right. So if Jimmy can come in here, Kyle can be like, well, you know, it was obvious who I had to go with. And, uh, you know, Jimmy was just uh, made a few bad plays. You know, that's how it's going to go if they lose. I would like Kyle to have a quick look <clears throat> with Jimmy, though, if Jimmy does play. If Jimmy plays and he looks rusty and injured, I get him out of there because they can win without passing. Like, I, they could win. They've already beaten this team in the playoffs throwing eight times. They could do it again. That, the reason I say Trey Lance isn't because I think Trey Lance is going to go off against the Packers. Like, it doesn't matter who the quarterback is. I just want a quarterback who doesn't freaking lose the game. And Jimmy is on a mission right now. The team is – like, he's over there trying to lose, this, and everyone's, like, saving him. And then he gets to, like, ride on, out in the sunset like he won or something. But no, seven – he's on five picks in the last three games. I'll trust him against Aaron Rodgers. The reason no, they haven't lost is because Stafford – the, the quarterbacks the last have offset his picks. Stafford threw two when he threw two. Prescott threw one when he threw one. Rodgers didn't throw a pick in this game. He, he hasn't thrown – I think he's thrown 20 touchdowns and no picks in his last some games. I mean, it's crazy. It's not going to happen. Sorry. Exactly. The only way the Niners are going to force a turnover is on fumbles. And there is a real possibility of that as long as they can get after him. 